The man considered by most to be the single greatest football player of all time, Pele, passed away on December 29th, 2022 after a lengthy battle with cancer. So I can't pronounce his birth name, but this was it. And he was born on October 23rd, 1940 in the country of Brazil and named by his parents after the American scientist Thomas Edison. It wouldn't take Pele long to separate himself from his peers and become the inspirational athlete we know him to be today. The first step in Pele's journey was to escape the sleepy town of his birth, Tres Corazoas, a name that translates to three hearts in Portuguese, and is located some 150 miles from Brazil's three major cities. Pele's humble village is surrounded by coffee plantations and is widely recognized for just one thing, producing the greatest star to ever play the world's most beautiful game of what was effectively a tiny hut-like house. Perched on the slope of a hill, Pele's original home would hold such a special place in his heart that well over a half century later, after leaving the village to join Santos FC as only a teenager, Pele would eventually reconstruct his childhood home based off of the memories of his mother, Celeste who's still alive to this day, a hundred years old. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Known as Casa Pele, this replica house was built using aging techniques that transported the interior and exterior of the space back to the year 1940. While there was no existing photos or descriptions of the original home, the furniture and objects lovingly placed throughout this version are all faithful to the the time period. They were acquired through an exhaustive search of farms, thrift stores, and antique shops over the span of about three years. This means when you step foot inside this place, you'll immediately feel whisked back to the early 20th century, where a giant radio, a wood-burning stove, and low-voltage lamps were all very much a part of Pele's day-to-day -day childhood. Since opening its doors, Casa Pele has already gone on to receive over 15,000 visitors from 28 different countries all around the globe. And with his recent passing, you can expect that number to grow by a leap and bounds over the next few weeks. Of course, this replica of the home he grew up in isn't the only monument to the legacy Pele left behind. In Santos, the city where he rose to fame, you can visit the Pele Museum, an institution that was first opened in 2014, which consists of a remarkable collection of everything from photos to boots and kits he used during the course of his career. With more than curated 2,500 items, this multi-story 43,000 square foot facility has enough going on inside of it to keep a lifelong Pele fan entertained for hours. Of course, when you're as massive a star as Pele would become on the football pitch, celebrity isn't usually relegated to only the country where you're from. In Pele's case, his immense appeal would take him across the world to the United States where he would eventually buy himself a spectacular home. With as big of an international star as he was, Pele maintained a four decade long real estate connection to the Hamptons in New York State. Pele was originally lured to New York by the late businessman Steve Ross, the former one time chairman of Time Warner. Ross founded the New York Cosmos soccer team way back when in 1970, and five years later, he made a splash when he offered Pele a contract estimated to be worth around 4.5 million dollars, bringing a huge amount of US attention to what was then a barely known pastime in North America. Besides being an ultra rich football aficionado, Ross was also a frequent visitor to the Hamptons, who owned what was known as the sprawling Cody House compound. This was located in the neighborhood of Georgica. It's highly likely that Ross entertained Pele in his palatial estate and maybe even encouraged the athlete to buy his own place nearby. In 1979, the three time World Cup winner dropped $156,000 for a waterfront hideaway in the Clearwater neighborhood of Springs on the northern shore of East Hampton. Today, that $156,000 would roughly translate to around $680,000. For nearly 40 years afterwards, the football star and his two daughters, both of whom live mainly in New York, would use this one acre spread as a summer retreat. At some point during that lengthy period of time, Pele expanded upon what's now a 3,400 square foot home by adding a second story and totally redesigning the kitchen as well. Today, the home boasts massive windows that make the absolute most of its incredible location and views, such as in the living room, the 
that features both hardwood floors and a double height ceiling to ensure for optimal relaxation in all that sunlight. Not far from there is the recently renovated chef's kitchen with marble countertops, a center island, and sliding doors that open out to the rear deck. As for the home's number of bedrooms, six in total, you can find those in the main floor and the upper level, alongside a total of seven and a half baths. There are two master suites located on the property and they both have sliding doors that access a deck which runs the entire width of the house. Meanwhile, a finished lower floor includes a massive media and playroom with a wet bar, office, and lots of storage space to work with. As for the exterior, it includes a pool as well as an outdoor shower and a sauna alongside a detached two-car garage. For an added bonus, the property is FEMA rated X, which means that it's unlikely to flood and it also boasts a deep beach along with marina rights. Following decades of ownership, Pele briefly rented this home at around $45,000 a month. But in 2018, he decided to sell the property for $2.85 million. At that point, Pele was already largely spending most of his time at home in Brazil, a remarkable looking estate, the details of which have never been made available to the public, but it is believed to be worth an estimated $4 million. It was here back in his home country where Pele would wind up spending the final years of his life. Pele had been undergoing treatment for his metastatic cancer since having a tumor on the right side of his colon removed in 20. In fact, throughout the entire pandemic, Pele largely remained out of the limelight, spending his 80th birthday isolated at home and skipping out on an event to unveil a life-size statue of him in Rio de Janeiro. Unfortunately, his illness got to the point where chemotherapy was no longer working. In November of 2022, Pele was admitted to the Albert Einstein Hospital with swelling and other cardiac issues. At the time, it was suggested that there was no emergency at hand, but unfortunately, that would prove not to be the case. On Christmas Eve, Pele's daughter Kelly would post a moving photo of herself holding her father in his hospital bed writing. We continue to be here in fight and in faith another night together. Only a handful of days later, Pele would pass away at the age of 82 due to multiple organ failure as a result of complications from colon cancer. It didn't take long for the tributes to come pouring in from some of the world's most notable footballers, including Neymar, Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Not to mention other celebrities and world figures. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro would even declare a three-day period of national mourning with Pele's funeral being held at Santos Stadium in the very early stages of January 2023. Following the funeral ceremony, Pele was buried in Santos Memorial Necropoli Econominica, a 32-story high cemetery that Guinness World Records has dubbed the tallest in the world. Certainly a fitting spot to act as the final resting place for a legend as big as Pele. But no memorial, no matter how special, will ever be able to capture the magic that he created every time he stepped foot onto the pitch. All right, everyone, that'll bring this special in memorial house tour to a close. Before you head out, do me a favor and consider the following. If you ever became a sports legend, would you want to be buried in the town where you were born or the city that turned you into a star? Let me know where you'd like your legacy to be celebrated in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to never miss a tour. My name is Care the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.